talkfightly.com, Spreaker.com slash user slash Fightly. We've got our all MMA interviews, exclusive MMA articles on there. And make sure you check us out on Fightly.com. Sean Len here with the Fight Report. And right now we welcome LFA Lightweight Pro Joe Skeletor Giannetti to the Fight Report. He'll be in action against Aaron McKenzie, LFA 94, Friday, October 30th on Access TV. Uh, train at South Shore Sport Fighting in Rockland, Mass. Nine yes, sir. Four. Yeah, and they were a veteran of also the Ultimate Fighter Season 27 and the Cage uh, Titans as well. So, yes, talk about obviously getting this opportunity to fight again under the circumstances in LFA. Uh, how excited are you for that? You know, you, you fought back in, uh, just a couple, few months ago back in July, and how excited are you to get back in that cage? Uh, I'm super excited, man. I mean, it's awesome just... LFA is a great promotion, and I'm glad they're having me back. And I'm glad that they're letting me, you know, do my job during all this COVID stuff. Um, I wasn't sure I was ever going to be able to fight this year with everything going on, and now I'm fighting twice. So it's really, really cool. And, you know, if everything goes smooth here, maybe I'll try and get another fight by the end of the year. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so when you when you actually got called, got, got the call from Bellator, were you ready for this fight? Uh, were you Were you expecting the call? Uh, from LFA? Yes. Um, yeah, no, I, I was hoping so. They told me they were going to have me back, um, but they said they were looking for somebody to fight me at lightweight, and then it took a couple weeks. So I got a little worried I wasn't going to be able to fight. Um, and then, you know, they hit me up and gave me a name. So, I, of course, I took it. And talk about, you know, what did you feel about your last fight you were, build, you were able to build upon positively, training for this one? Um, I built on positively – Training sucks right now. It's miserable. I have guys that are bigger than me and guys that are just like weight classes above me literally just lay on me and try to hold me down. And that's the goal. And that's what training is every day because that's all these lightweights want to do. Um, and like, I'm not the first person to be like, oh, he's just not really doing much because obviously you need to learn how to wrestle. I've been working on my wrestling like crazy. Um, I've been getting stronger. But at the end of the day, as you could see in my last fight, these guys. They just want the W over me. They don't want to fight, which I don't blame them to an extent, but it's something that I got to I gotta be able to answer to. So there's going to be no laying prey in this fight, and if uh, Mackenzie thinks there is going to be, he's in for a bad night. Talk about, you know, how did, who has helped you train in this training camp specifically, and why are they important to you? Everybody at South Shore Sport Fight, man. Um, we've got a whole – we've got a diverse group of people there. You know, we've got beginners that walk right in the door. We've got guys that have been fighting for, for plus 10 years. Um, just everybody, man. Everybody's a coach. I got my teammate Johnny Cupcakes Campbell. He's actually fighting tomorrow night for Tora MMA. Um, you know, he's been awesome to work with. Uh, he's a couple weight classes below me, but, man, you wouldn't know it by the way he fights. He's a bad man. Um, you know, I've been going to this wrestling club, Brick Road Wrestling, been getting some working with some killer wrestlers, like high school seniors, college wrestlers, kids that graduated college that are just monsters uh yeah so i've been torturing myself this camp and i've been working with some killers definitely uh when you're in the cage talk about being focused and not having any distractions from the fans uh at your last fight in lfa were you able to hear your corner better and uh what do you think uh will be the result this time uh it was kind of cool not having fans you know it kind of reminded me of tough a little bit it was just you know it was you your opponent and our corners um yeah i could hear my my corner fine um obviously more than usual i don't know man i think i think the fans are a good and a bad i think on the walkout you get really nervous because fans are there but in the moment in the fight at least for me good or bad the fans hype me up uh they get me going i don't think they affect my performance feeling it's just really cool to have fans there and you know get you going Definitely. Well, I mean, you always get that uh, post-fight reaction, right? When the people, if you do something really huge and everybody's yeah. like, you know, posting on social media afterwards, like where they were watching it too, as well, right? Yeah, it was cool. I mean, honestly, even in the last one, there was a couple people there, um, in like a, like they had like a little private section up top. And after the fight, obviously, I was like down in the dumps. I lost a decision, but they lost it for me. They were like losing it. Like, granted, they might have been a few drinks in. But they were pumped, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't give you an exciting fight. And they were like, no, you crushed it. You were trying to fight. So it was really cool, man. Uh, when you get good fans in MMA, you get some usually some really good fans. For sure. And, you know, when you look at the Contender Series, you know, you feel it's a much efficient way to get a UFC contract instead of the Ultimate Fighter. 
Obviously, you went through the whole Ultimate Fighter. The whole premise behind that was the undefeated season. You know, you guys were all undefeated going in, and only one person would remain undefeated, or two of them in the different weight classes, one in each weight class. So when you look at Contender Series, just much more efficient, you think? Uh, yeah, I think that the Contender Series also kind of just suits to my fight style. I mean, uh, Dana said it over and over again. He wants guys that are good, and he wants guys that are flashy, like showmanship, and he wants guys that are there to fight, not guys that are just there to win. There's been plenty of guys that have won, looks great, but were kind of, you know, tentative, not trying to really fight. Um, you know, I think that I always bring it. I'm always trying to finish guys. And even in my most boring fights, my opponent will say it. They froze up because they, could, they couldn't they could figure out an answer to me still trying to finish them off my back against the cage. Uh, so I think you stick me in a cage with anybody in the world and you tell them, you got to finish this guy, I'm going to take their neck. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even in your last fight, I mean, you almost had a, pulled off a nice submission. So, you know, when you look back at the fight with Brand Moore, even Mike Rosano, you saw that there was opportunities just weren't able to capitalize on them. If you were to rematch either of them, which one would you want to? Oh, wow. That's a good question. Oh, probably Trezano. Wow. I wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> probably probably Trezano. Um, just because, just the premise of it. Uh, it was one of those fights where, like, I didn't really... He didn't really beat me. I just kind of lost. You know what I mean? Right. It was a great thing. He beat me fair and square. I hate when guys, you know, he didn't beat me. He beat me fair and square. Um, but personally, I just felt like I lost the fight more than he won it, if that makes sense in a sure. humble sort of way. Uh, and I just feel like peak performance on that, you know, anybody can win any night, but I feel like peak performance on another, I take that W. And also talk about who's helped you specifically. Uh, uh, in this camp, and why are they important to you? Uh, my coach, Justin Burrell, he's in, been in my corner every single fight. Um, he's been in my wrestling coach since I was in high school, my senior year. He's super important to me because he knows me. He knows me better than anybody. Uh, he knows what to say, what not to say, you know. He doesn't really hype me up in the back room. We all kind of just sit there and hang out, joke around. And, uh, you know, sometimes he just he gives me this look sometimes. Like, for different things, sometimes he'll give me this look like you're being an idiot. Or he'll give me this look like, you know what to do, go to work. Um, so, you know, it's just good having somebody like that around. And he also, if he needs to say something, he doesn't care how I feel. He just tells me what I need to hear. Um, so he's been a big help, like always. Bill Mahoney, my coach over at South Shore Sport Fighting, you know, he's always in my corner too. Uh, he won't be making it out for this one because I can only have one corner. Um, so I'll be bringing Justin. Um, all the guys at Brick Road Wrestling, you know, those, like I said before, those guys are killers. I've been working with this guy, Jair, at uh, Real Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Taunton. He's a wizard when it comes to Jiu-Jitsu. So there's been a lot of people. I've reached out to a lot of people for this camp, and I appreciate literally every single one of them. Oh, that's also drew the network, even during these times, and get those different looks. That's crucial. Yeah, man, it's been important, and it's awesome, too, because all these places, you know, they figured out the safest way to do all of it, uh, and it, it's just really cool, you know. It's like a... It's a positive spin on the end of 2020. I didn't think that we'd be where we are as far as training, uh, but we are. Everybody's healthy. Everybody's safe. You know, everything's getting clean and sanitized, and we're all getting great work and good looks. And so I didn't see that coming, but I'm really happy it's uh, happening. For sure. And uh, when the world opens up again, like, what are you looking uh, forward to? When you see, like, international competition, you know, obviously you want to be the best, not just in the U.S., but the world. Is that something that really interests you? Yeah, for sure. I think I know where this conversation's going. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, there's plenty of fighters all over the world that I'd love to fight. Um, there's a lot of good guys, and I think that you're right. Like, there's definitely a lot of guys that aren't in the U.S. that are good stylistic matchups. Um, but, yeah, I can't wait till you know, the world opens up, whether that means, you know, guys can get flown in to fight whatever promotion I'm in, or if I'm in the UFC getting flown out by them to another fight island or whatever. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting more fights in. And we appreciate you being on the Fireport, Joe Gennady. Make sure to tell us on social media and what we can expect at LFA 94 next Friday. LFA 94, you can expect fireworks. Unfortunately, my opponent's probably going to be trying to lay and pray, but it ain't happening. I'm bringing the heat, and I'm putting that man to sleep. It's going to be a great night, and I'm going to go have some M&Ms afterwards. <laughs> Definitely. And it, it is a tough guy that you're taking on, obviously. He was a, a Bellator veteran. 
and he, you feel he'll have a lot to offer you in this matchup. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, he goes for the kill in most of his fights, so I really hope he brings it this time. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. If he tries to lay and pray, we're ready. If he's not trying to lay and pray, I'm excited. Well, we can't wait to watch it. Make sure to check out Joe Donetti next Friday night, October 30th, Access TV. He takes on Aaron McKenzie at LFA 94. And we appreciate you being on the Fightly Report today, Joe. Anyone you'd like to thank, go ahead. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody at South Shore Sport Fighting. And thank you, everybody that watches, everybody that's a fan. Uh, it really does mean a lot on the support I get. So just thank you, everybody. We appreciate it. And hey, we appreciate you going out during this tough time and uh, putting on entertainment for us. So thank you for that as well. It means a lot. Thank you. Anytime. Take care, uh, Joe, and best of luck to you.